Welcome to Stoic Live, where we talk about the latest fishing and hunting topics. Testing one, two, three. What is going on, guys? Welcome to another episode of Stoic Live. The last video was South Texas Redfish Fishing Tips. This video is going to be South Texas Speckled Trout Fishing Tips tips so let's get straight into it man down here in the Rio Grande Valley I primarily fish Port Mansfield specifically when I am targeting big big speckled trout I have a buddy of mine uh Captain Marco Arispe as well as my cousin uh, Jacob Garza and a bunch of uh other buddies that I've been fishing with man and they pretty much spend their entire life targeting these uh South Texas fish redfish trout and flounder and uh, my, my buddy, Marco Arispe, man, I don't know what it is, but that guy knows where those speckled trout are at. I'm prefacing this video by saying that because I have learned a lot from these guys, man. I have picked their brains every time I go fishing. I always ask questions no matter what. I am always learning. I am always trying to grow my fishing techniques, strategies, arsenals with what I am using every time I go out. So if you're going out fishing and you think you know it all, man, just always ask questions because you can always learn something new from just a simple question. So the basic tip I want to give for you guys, if you're just going to be starting off and you don't really know how to target these uh, speckled trout, is always use the right rod and reel combo for what you like and what the fish or what type of fish you are targeting. Me, I'll just tell you what I like to do. I like using 7 foot medium light rods and a 2500 or a 2000 reel. Why? Because if you're throwing artificial lures targeting these speckled trout, just remember you're going to be casting and casting and casting and casting like hundreds of times throughout the day. Sometimes you only get one bite. It's that big speckled trout. Sometimes you're catching a lot of fish, right? Either way, if you're casting a lot, you want to be comfortable when you're fishing. You want to be able to cast that lure out there without hurting your shoulder, without getting, you know, sore. You know, I played baseball back in the day, football. I played uh, basketball. So my knees, my elbows, my shoulders, man, they're gone. So you got to make sure you're comfortable. That seven foot medium light rod is going to give you more of a pop. It's going to make that lure dance in the water column. It's going to make it look a lot more natural. Imagine throwing something super small, throwing a three inch, a four inch lure, right? And you're throwing it with a medium heavy rod. Every time you pop, every time you throw that lure out there, you're gonna get tired, man. And when you pop that lure, that 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 lure is not gonna dance the same because that rod's not gonna have the same flex. It's not gonna have that same bend. So a medium light rod is a good all around rod. You can also throw a medium for your top waters, right? You can throw a uh, light you know a light rod if you want to go that route but i like throwing a seven foot medium light man because you can throw a lot of stuff with it so that's your rod your reel i like throwing a 2000 2500 reel why because it weighs a lot less you know get out there and get yourself the uh the the, the specific reel that you like i like throwing shimano's because they've lasted a long time for me man and i haven't had any issues so 2000 2500 that's the that's just going to weigh a lot less. I know the one that I like to, to, to throw, it's like six ounces. So imagine that with a nice medium light rod. It's going to be super, super light. So when you're walking the entire day, you're walking miles and miles and miles. You're not going to have that uh, that pain, that, uh, that uneasiness whenever you're fishing with that rod. 10-pound Power Pro, like I said, with the Redfish. Um, yes, Speckled Trout, they have a little bit more teeth on on uh you know in, in their mouth so you might want to use a heavier leader line i like throwing 30 pound floral attached to my leader line that way that lure is gonna you know just be a lot more natural in the water you're not going to be pressuring it with you know throwing straight braid straight to your lure so your medium light rod your 2500 reel your uh, 10 pound power pro and using a 30 pound mono leader line that way your lure uh, that way that line disappears in the water and that speckled trout is not going to see the line and they're not going to get uh, skittish. So they're not going to see the line. And they're not going to turn off once they get close to your lure. So that's going to be the first tip, the right gear and tackle. A uh, little bonus tip, man. For speckled trout, I don't know what it is, guys. There's a lot of people that, that swear by throwing big artificial lures. Yes, that works. Yes, I've caught fish on a 4-inch or a 5-inch for speckled trout. But, man, lately... I've been throwing the Bay Villain 
3.75 inches and I take the tail off to make it go it down into a 3.5 inch. Why? I said in the last video, I'm going to say it again, man. These speckled trout are heavy, heavy, heavily pressured down here in the Laguna Madre. They're, they're seeing lures the entire day. They're seeing lures for weeks and months and years. So throw something a little bit different on them. That three inch, three and a half inch lure is going to be a smaller profile. It's going to, it's going to get their attention when they come in and they're going to hammer your lure. Yes, you can, like I said, use a five inch. Do it, man. Try out, try it out and see what works for you. If you catch a fish on a smaller profile, comment down below. Or if you have caught big speckled trout with that smaller profile, three inch gang, comment down below. And I want to read your comment. So that's going to be the bonus tip. Um, techniques man what is the best way to work that lure well that just depends on when you're at where you're at right uh i could tell you to pop pop let it sit yes that works but if you're shallow you might want to pop pop let it sit pop pop let it sit because that lure is going to be on top of the water column you don't want that lure to fall down to the grass you don't want to fall down to the oysters and they're going to be getting grass you're going to be getting hung up the entire time so the 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 location that you're fishing is always is always going to dictate how you work your lure. Remember, if you're fishing for speckled trout, I like to to work like the deeper potholes will work like a little bit of a drop off. Just remember when that lure hits the water, you want to wait 1001, 1002, 1003, 1004 and then you know that lure is hitting the bottom, pop pop. Okay, cool. I know it takes 3 to 4 seconds for that lure to hit the bottom. Now, when I'm casting out that lure and I let it hit the water, I don't automatically retrieve it, right? I'm letting that lure drop three to four seconds, letting it drop all the way down to the water column, letting it go all the way down. Those speckled trout sometimes are on the bottom, you, you, and then they're going to hammer your lure, and you're going to know, okay, four seconds, the lure drops, that speckled trout's on the bottom. Hey, sometimes I throw it out there, that lure drops 1,001. 2002 boom i get a hit okay now i know the fish are about two feet deep or about two seconds deep cast it out there do the same thing change up your retrieve until you find out what the fish want sometimes you go out fishing one day sometimes you go fishing the same spot another day the fish are going to want it completely different sometimes man it's crazy i'll go fishing for speckled trout and i know that that area is like super deep but hey, man, those speckled trout for some reason want that lure on the top of the water column. So I literally cast it out there. Don't even wait. Pop, 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 pop. Kind of like subsurface, like a little bit of a top water, but underneath the water. And that's how the speckled trout uh, want the lure. So what I would recommend is just keep changing it. Find out what the fish want. And don't forget, man, if you're fishing with a bunch of your homies, if you're fishing with a bunch of your buddies and you catch a fish, head over or, or tell your buddy, yo, bro, this is what the fish want. This is what color I'm using. This is the size of the lure. Always share with your buddies, man. Let's make this like a like a cool learning environment for those that are just starting off that your buddies are going out for the first time. Share your knowledge with them, man. You might know a lot bit a lot more than they do or hey, they might know they might know more than you do like Captain Marco does and I always ask questions and uh I stuttered a little bit right there. I know I'm going to go off topic. ADHD ADHD brain, right? But Man, uh, when I grew, when I was growing up, my, my, see how I stutter a lot? That's just how I grew up. I would stutter. I have ADHD. When I started off with uh, talking about uh, letters and numbers, I would always get a mix up in my head. But that's why I wanted to make this video for you guys to make it a little bit more raw, a little bit more live for you guys. Um, next tip, let's go to observe the environment. Whenever I'm fishing, man, I'm not just like walking around. I'm not, I'm not looking like straight down i'm always keeping my eyes open i'm looking around keeping my head on a swivel and like ron burgundy right anchor man keep your head on a swivel keep looking around sometimes you're going to see birds working hey sometimes you see a group of bait fish working to your right working to your left cast a lure out there man you, even if you think it's bait fish nine times out of ten those predator fish are in the area those predator fish are following that bait and they're looking for an easy meal so when you cast that lure out there and you pop it pop it pop it make it look like an injured jerk shad those redfish and trout flounder they're going to come in they're going to hit your lure because they're going to think it's an injured bait fish so that's an extra tip always keep your head on a swivel keep looking around look at water look at the water clarity look at ripples look at v's look at all that good stuff look for birds and then uh oh yeah also man if you see a group of like if you see a group of bait fish and then you see like some grass, a grass flat, cast to the corner of that grass flat, cast to the other corner, 
cast to the middle and sometimes those fish are hanging out along the edges waiting to ambush a meal um also man let's get the let's get this last tip for you guys i wanted to ask you guys whenever you're fishing for big speckled trout do you normally fish in the morning or do you normally fish in the afternoon i'm going to tell you something man 95 percent of my big speckled trout i'm talking with over 25 inches 27 inches 28 inches i haven't caught a dirty 30 in years man i caught one when i was like 12 years old it was literally 32 and a half inch big old speckled trout but what time of day is it whenever you're whenever you're fishing for these big speckled trout when have you caught these big girls these thick girls hashtag thick girls only go over to my website stoicoutdoors.com but like I said, 95% of my big speck of trout are always in the morning time. I have only caught maybe a handful, maybe three to four, maybe five. Those have been, you know, 23, 24 inch. One was about 25 inch over in, in uh, Port Mansell. But man, I don't know what it is, but early morning hours, cold water temperatures, cold, uh, like in the, in the winter time, you know, it's a little bit of, a little bit foggy out, a little bit rainy, a little bit of misting. That's when I catch my big speckled trout so thank you guys for watching this video all the way through i hope you guys enjoyed the last one and i hope you enjoyed this one I, like i said i wanted to make this a little bit of more of a raw video more of a live video i know sometimes i mess up sometimes i stutter sometimes i do really good where i can talk really fast like this but a lot of the times you know i have that little bit of a little bit of that you know where i can't talk fast or i can't get the words right in my head but i wanted to still make these videos for you guys so thank you guys for watching as always like share and subscribe head over to stoicoutdoors.com if you're if you're interested in purchasing a cap a shirt or anything like that thank you stick around for the next episode as always be resilient on the water and off peace thanks for tuning in subscribe and stick around for the next episode of stoic live